All right, welcome to section 4.5. We're going to look at making sketches of our curves by hand. All right, so first of all, let's talk about everything that we're going to be able to do if you would say algebraically or through calculus. Our x intercepts, this is where your graph touches the or crosses the x axis. You'll just substitute 0 in for y and solve the equation for x and your answer has to look like a point. Your y-intercept, same concept, this is where it touches or crosses the y-axis. You substitute 0 in for x and solve the equation for I, y and your answer has to look like a point, 0 comma some value. The domain is a set of all x values. Make sure that there are no zeros in the denominator and no negative values inside even radicals because that's going to either give you vertical asymptotes or cut off your domain, values that you can't have. Your continuity, there's no holes, vertical asymptotes, or gaps. Again, holes come from identical x factors, top and bottom of your rational functions, and your vertical asymptotes when x equals zero in the denominator. Horizontal asymptote, we talked about this in the beginning of the semester. Horizontal line that graphs approach as x approaches positive or negative infinity. We had three cases. We said if the top power was less than the bottom power, your y would equal 0 for your horizontal asymptote. Case 2 is if the top power was equal to the bottom power, then your y equals that leading coefficient ratio, a over b. In case 3, if the top power is greater than the bottom power, there was no horizontal asymptote. This is where we probably would have to go find a slant asymptote. Your first derivative, where f of x increases or decreases, and it helps us find us our local maxes and mins. So this is where we take the first derivative function, set it equal to 0, or we identify anything, any does not exist values. That's usually your vertical asymptotes. To find your critical numbers, again, remember those are critical numbers, those vertical asymptotes. Test values on each side of the critical numbers, and we can do it that way, or we can use our right-hand behavior test and alternate signs, which I am going to do that when I give you my examples. Remember that if your first derivative function is greater than 0, your f of x is increasing. If your f prime of x is less than 0, your original function decreases. We can also identify max and mins. Remember, if you go from positive to negative, that means you are increasing to decreasing. That would be a relative max. And decreasing to increasing, that's going to be a relative min. Second derivative test, this is where you find your graph where concaves up or concaves down at your points of inflection. So this is when you take the second derivative, set it equal to 0. That will be your points of inflection. You're going to test your critical numbers. Well, we could do that, or we can do our right-hand behavior test for that as well. So when your second derivative at that critical number is greater than 0, it's going to, the original function concaves up. Your second derivative at, oops, that should be a c less than 0, f of x concaves down. Max and min values. That's your first derivative test from above. Concavity, hills and valleys, second derivative above, second sentence. Points of inflection where f of x changed concavity, again, same thing as we did earlier, second derivative test. And limits at infinity where f of x is doing, what is it doing at positive or negative infinity? This is going to be your horizontal asymptotes or your limits of f of x. All right, so let's look at an example. Analyze and sketch the graph of f of x equals x to the fourth minus 8x squared plus 7. So the first thing we want to do is everything we can possibly do with our original function. All right, the domain. It's a polynomial function. It's all real numbers. Notice that there's going to be no vertical asymptotes because it's not a rational function. There will be no horizontal asymptotes. It's not a rational function. And as your limit of f of x approaches positive or negative infinity, because it's x to the fourth power, right-hand behavior and left-hand behavior will go up because you have a positive x squared. x-intercept, y-intercept, well, the quickest and easiest thing to do first is the y-intercept because that's just 0, comma, your constant. 
x-intercept, we're going to have to factor this. So since this power of 4 is twice as big as this power of 2, we can treat this like a quadratic. What are two numbers that multiply to be 7 and add up to be a negative 8 would be negative 1 and negative 7. Set those equal to 0. Solve them for x. x is going to equal positive negative 1. Add over the 7 and take the square root, plus or minus the square root of 7. But again, we want to write these as points. So that's everything we can do with the original f of x. All right, next we want to look at this first derivative. So down here in the lower left-hand corner, I kept all of our work that we found because we're going to accumulate all this as we go. All right, so we need to take the derivative of this. Okay, so that's going to be 4x cubed minus 16x. So we're going to find our critical numbers. We're going to set this equal to 0, factor it, find our values. So x equals 0, x squared minus 4 equals 0, x equals plus or minus 2. So those are our critical numbers. And now we can find out where does our graph increase. So again, like we said, we'll make a number line. Put your critical numbers in numerical order. Look at your first derivative. Your leading term is a positive 4x cubed, so your right-hand behavior is positive, then negative, then positive, then negative. Because these all occurred once, you're going to have alternating signs. So you're increasing where it's positive, decreasing where you have those negatives. So writing your intervals for increasing, negative 2 to 0, and 2 to infinity. Decreasing negative infinity to negative 2, and 0 to 2. All right, now, local max and mins are relative max and mins. Okay, remember, oh, I can't remember the rule. Yes, you can. You just think of this. I'm going decreasing to increasing, so that puts out a relative min at negative 2, or a local min. Now, where did the negative 9 come from? You take that negative 2, you plug it back into the original function. That's what I did here. Crunch the numbers, we got negative 9. So that's this point. Increasing to decreasing. Increasing to decreasing, that's going to be a relative max or a local max. And since you plugged in the 0 already, when we found the y-intercept, there is your local max. Decreasing to increasing, that's your relative min or local min. Again, plugging in a positive 2 into the x to the 4th and x squared, it's going to give us the same values as over here. So that's, again, a negative 9. So there's our points, our relative mins and our relative maxes. Okay, now to the double derivative, second derivative. So again, notice I kept all that important information over here. Original function, first derivative, second derivative, we've got to take the derivative of this function. That's going to be 12x squared minus 16. Okay, we're going to set this equal to 0. Factor out a 4. 3x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. That's going to be add over the 4, divide over the 3, so plus or minus the square root of 4 thirds, or plus or minus 2 over the square root of 3. And if you want to rationalize it, multiplying the top and bottom by the square root of 3. Okay, so these are your points of inflection right here. Okay, so we should, again, I apologize, I ran out of room here. This should be written as a point, so comma zero here. So again, we're going to test this. Right-hand behavior, first term, 12x squared is positive. They occurred once, so minus, then positive. So here we're concaving up concaving down, concaving up. So our interval for concave up is negative infinity to negative 2 square root of 3 over 3 and 2 radical 3 over 3 comma infinity. Concave down is in between those two points of inflection. So we have all of our information here. Now it's time to start plotting points and trying to sketch our graph. Well we got our y-intercept, you got some x-intercepts. So let's get those all plotted. y-intercept and there's our plus and minus 1 and our plus and minus the square root of 7. Okay. We also had the relative mins at negative 2, 9 and 2, negative 9. So negative 2, 9, positive 2, 9. 
We also had a max at our y-intercept. So I can see my graph coming down, up. Can't get my mouse to work here. Back down and up. So there's my graph. All right, let's try another example. Oh, perfect. This one's already factored for me. Okay, so domain, all real numbers, because again, this would be a polynomial function if we multiplied it all out. No vertical, no horizontal asymptotes. Now, let's look at that limit as f of x goes to positive infinity and negative infinity. Well, if you multiplied this all out, this would be a negative x squared times a negative x squared times a negative x squared. That'd be a negative x to the sixth. So in this case, we're going to negative infinity, both to the left side and to the right-hand side. All right, x-intercept, we can do this right away. It's already factored for us. 1 minus x squared set equal to 0. x is equal to plus or minus 1, but because that whole binomial is to the third power, there'll be three answers. So I'm going to leave that little subscript 3 to remind me it happens three times. So that's going to be important when we get to our graphing. Y-intercept, well, that'll be 1 to the third power, so that's just 0, 1. Okay, now off to the first derivative. Oh, well, we could FOIL this all out, or we could just do the chain rule. Outer function, treat this like x squared, so that's 3x squared, or 3 times our binomial 1 minus x squared squared. All right, and then you have to take the derivative of the inside, so the derivative of the negative x squared is negative 2x squared. The 1 is just a 0, so that kind of cancels itself out. So we can multiply this together, and we get negative 6x times the binomial 1 minus x squared, all that squared. So critical numbers, negative 6x equals 0. That will be a 0. And the 1 minus x squared, again, will give us plus or minus 1, but that's only going to occur twice. All right, so I make my number line. I, ooh, notice, notice, notice. Very important here. Keep that, too, because remember, now with even multiplicity, at these critical numbers or x-intercepts, we will not have a sign change. Also, it's a negative 6x times a negative x squared times another negative x squared. So that would be a negative 6x to the fifth power. So we're negative, no sign change negative, zero happened once, we switch to positive, Multiplicity of 2, we stay positive. So we're increasing at the two positives, decreasing at the two negatives. So my increasing part of the function is negative infinity to the 0, decreasing from 0 to infinity. Okay, now, max and mins, we only have one right here where we're increasing and decreasing. So there's a relative max or local max at 0, 1. That was your y-intercept. That's it. You gotta have a sign change to have a max or min. Okay, so we're done there. Off to the second derivative, and then we'll make our graph. All right, so, oh, holy moly, trying to take the derivative of this. All right, here we go. I see a product rule with a chain rule. Okay, so here we go. Second function, 1 minus x squared squared, right there, times the derivative of negative 6x is negative 6, plus first function, negative 6x, times, here comes your chain rule, 1 minus x squared squared, bring the 2 down to the front, raise it to the first power, leave your 1 minus x squared on the inside, then take the derivative of your 1 minus x squared, which is negative 2x. And usually when you do these, there's going to be some factoring. I can see some negative 6s that will factor out, and I see a 1 minus x squared that will factor out. Then you have 1 minus x squared, one of those binomials left, plus the x times the 2 times the negative 2x. So if we crunch that out, we get a minus 4x squared, with this minus x squared, that's going to give us 1 minus 5x squared. So the 1 minus x squared 
That's going to give me plus or minus 1. Negative 6 can't be equal to 0, so basically throw that factor out. Over here, 1 minus 5x squared, that would be 1 over 5. When you solve it for x squared, then take the square root. We'll just say plus or minus 1 over the square root of 5. Okay, write our numbers in numerical order. So, let's see. Original function, where is it at? Do, 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 right here. So follow with me. Negative 6 times negative x squared times negative 5x squared. All right. Now you have to include that numerical GCF because if you foiled this all out, you would still have to multiply negative 6 into that polynomial. So a negative times a negative times a negative, that's my right-hand behavior, negative. Now each one of those numbers occurred once, so we alternate signs. There we go. Okay, so holy moly, got a lot of concave down, concave up, down, up, down. All right, so my two concave up intervals, right there, negative 1 to negative 1 over the square root of 5, and 1 over the square root of 5 to 1, and all my, down, my intervals for concaving down negative infinity to negative 1 between the two negative 1 radical 5 1 over radical 5 those two ugly fractions and 1 to infinity all right so let's go make our graph here so plot the important points we got our y-intercept we got our x-intercepts that occurred three times we have a max well that's my y-intercept so I have basically those three points to work with. All right, so let's see. This graph said that in both the left and right-hand behavior, we're going down. So my graph is going to come up. Now with that multiplicity of three, it's got to look like a cubic curve right here at negative one. Then we're going to hit that relative max or local max at zero, one, come back down. And again, it's got to look like a cubic curve right here. And then we go down. All right. So I'm going to stop right here. We're going to break this up into small part videos, trying to keep these around 15 minutes.